Now, if you want to design to avoid pollution, what are your top priorities? This guy fishing here looks like a terrible idea because of the floating garbage, but really that's not the biggest problem with water. The biggest source of water pollution is fertilizer and pesticides from agriculture. Then sewage treatment, and third is emissions from various industries, namely the manufacturing of products and materials. For air pollution, the main culprit is electricity generation, which as we saw earlier is mostly for buildings, and vehicles are the second and fourth biggest culprits. Interestingly, solvents are another big one. That's part of the chemical industry that includes cleaners, paints, adhesives, things like that. For solid waste, it might come as a surprise, but all the waste you ever see is just a fraction of the waste generated by you. It's the green slice, municipal waste. Recycling paper is important, but recycling buildings is even more important. The blue slice for construction and demolition is bigger than all municipal waste put together. And of course, notice the slice from coal ash there, that's just from coal power plants. And uh, the special wastes, that huge chunk there, that's mining, um, plus a little oil and gas, but uh, mostly mining for uh, the materials and buildings and roads you use. And half of hazardous waste is from mining also. So you want to design using less material and more recycled material, both to use fewer resources and to produce less waste. A laptop that just weighs five or six pounds itself may cause 40,000 pounds of waste. Uh, some companies are doing great things to improve this, like Naranda, that gold mining company we mentioned earlier, is using e-waste as an ore. Toxins are a complicated one, but here's a table of people's most common exposures to toxic chemicals. You can read it for real in the PDF or on their website, but in a nutshell, if you count the number of times that exposure routes are listed in the right-hand column, you'll find the number one most common is food, and number two is drinking water, and number three is building materials. So, putting all these things together, I would say the number one priority is food, both in the sense of keeping toxins out of foods and in the sense of avoiding pollution by creating the food, namely through fertilizers and pesticides. Um, and then transportation and buildings, no surprise. Again, there it's mostly about the fossil fuel use and efficiency, uh, but for buildings, uh, indoor air quality matters as well. Uh, and electricity generation is a big one as well, again. And uh, then chemicals, um, and also plastics, they're there mostly because they show up on the toxins list. So what are people doing to improve this? So, on the top left, researchers at the University of Warwick made cell phone cases of a composite of PLA bioplastic and sunflower seeds, so if you planted them, they wouldn't be waste, they would grow flowers. But don't plant the electronics. On the top right, uh, Zelfo is a plastic substitute made from paper mill waste, and it's non-toxic and moldable. At the bottom right is milk-based paint. It avoids carcinogenic solvents by using milk as a solvent. And on the bottom left, powder coating uses no solvents at all and can produce almost no waste because the overspray can be reused. On the left here is a circuit board made from waste chicken feathers and soy plastic in a composite that's just as tough as the fiberglass used for most circuit boards today. On the right is carbon conductive ink printed by inkjet with zero waste. Maybe someday entire circuit boards could be non-toxic and compostable.